Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to practice simplifying our paintings and I have chosen this reference photo because most of our subjects, including the windmill and the shed behind it, are in shades, so that has already deleted a lot of details for us to worry about. However, this windmill seems to be broken because it only has one of those leaves. Um, so we are going to do a very simple sketch to uh, trying to position, trying to see where we can position the missing leaves. For such a simple painting, it is not necessary to do a sketch beforehand, but it is always better to be familiar with your subject. I would increase, I would shrink the windmill a little bit. You know, since this is not about drawing, um, we don't really need to like strictly follow the reference photo. I mean, this is a this is not a drawing exercise. So let's imagine where the other leaves are. And we will just pretend that the fourth one is covered by the body of the windmill. And these are all in dark, so there's really no details here. And we will not paint. Okay, so... You can also use watercolor to do a simple sketch. You can find the videos on how to do value study for watercolor painting. Here I'm using a charcoal pencil because recently I bought a set and I want to try them. In the reference photo, you will probably see that the local color of the, I don't know, the leaves of the windmill is like white. But since it's in shade, actually it is darker than the sky if you squint your eyes. This makes our life much easier because we don't need to save these the, these lines with masking fluid or whatever. We can just paint the sky and then use a darker color, paint on top of it. So it's going to be positive painting. Now we have an idea how we are going to place, you know, all these elements of the painting. Let's also familiarize ourselves with the colors. Um, for yellow, I chose Indian yellow. It's a very bright, um, beautiful yellow. And for red, I'm going to use alizarin crimson. It's a cold yellow. Uh, it's a cold red. And for blue, I am using Prussian blue is a very strong pigment. You only need a little bit and then the color will be, will be very vibrant. You can experiment with any um, blue, red, yellow that you have and see how many different colors they can mix up into. And it will be a very fun and a useful exercise for you to be familiar with your paint and you can actually do a lot of paintings with just three pigments. Try it out. Since we've already did a sketch, so I'm going to fast forward my um, drawing process for the actual painting. And I just want to say when we use reference photo, for painting, um, it's very easy to get um, too focused on oh whether I am staying true to the photos. But uh, I have been trying 
to just use reference photos as a reference, not as a, I don't know, like a truth that I have to follow strictly. Now that the drawing is done, let's mix um, some puddles of colors first. So I mixed Prussian blue and a little bit of lizard crimson for the sky. I'm not really strictly following the colors I see in the reference photo. Um, this is also a very good exercise to force yourself um, to loosen up and to create instead of following the reference photo in terms of every shape, every detail, and every color. So I mixed this puddle of Indian yellow for the lower part of the sky near the horizon. Now I am going to wet um, the paper. Since I taped the paper to the board, I'm only going to wet um, one side of the paper. Unlike in my other videos where I thoroughly wet both sides of the papers here, I wasn't too bothered with wetting every corner of the paper. I even sprinkled some water, you know, because I want to try to see whether this will help um, the pigment flow, you know, in different um, ways. Now I'm picking up the Indian yellow, I'm pre-mixed and I am going to paint it um, in the lower part of the horizon and I am tilting my board in different direction, directions and I'm also using a spray bottle to try to encourage its flow. And now I'm picking up a lizard and crimson and add it to the um, part that's higher and trying to tilt the board in different directions to encourage um, its flow and the mixture. Now I'm adding this purplish blue mixture to the top of the sky. So as you can see, the sky, in terms of the sky, I'm really not following the reference photo. I am more interested in seeing how these three colors intermingle and create um, subtle changes of color on the paper. And when the sky is done, trying not to fiddle trying to add more strokes, it's just gonna disturb the pigments on the paper. Uh, and I'm very guilty of it. I, I, when I you know, look at the reference photo and I just thought, oh, it doesn't look like that. Let me add one more stroke here, one more stroke there, which is not good. Okay, so now I move on to the um, blend part of the painting because it's mostly green and a little bit like um, uh, orangey color. So you can just go down with the yellow because it's gonna be in both um, the green color and the yellow color. And I seem to have learned a lesson from painting the sky and I went much stronger in the color. Um, I think the my color in the sky is a little bit too light and it's gonna dry out um, too pale. So for these grass in the foreground, I'm just using um, the kind of orange color mixture from a lizard and crimson and the Indian yellow um, with some very rough brush strokes to suggest some um, tall grass. I'm also using the same color to paint the field uh, further away, lightly. Now I'm mixing the green with Indian yellow and Prussian blue. 
and just loosely paint the foliage around the shed. Now I'm adding a little bit Prussian blue into the green, make it make it um, cooler, and I paint the distant um, trees or mountains. I picked up um, this orangey color left on my palette and used it to paint the shed as an underpaint. And then I'm going to go darker with alizarin crimson. The reason why I first painted it with whatever was left on my palette is I want to keep it wet. I don't want it to dry because I only wet one side of the paper. So with heating on in my room, the drying speed is very fast. So now I'm mixing a little bit Prussian blue into my alizarin crimson and paint the shady parts of the shed. Actually, it can go a little bit darker in the most like shaded part. So I picked up um, Prussian blue and a little bit leftover green color because it's a complementary color of um, red. So it darkens red and painted the um, really shaded part of um, the shed. And now I'm mixing a dark, darker green to paint the shaded parts of the foliage. Because the, the shaded part of the foliage and the shaded part of the um, shed are actually, you know, side by side. So you don't want a hard line separating them. That's why I'm painting them together. The foliage part is actually quite wet, so um, the pigment, if it's not very strong, it kind of spreads out and then you can't see the um, brush strokes. And in order to paint the shade and shades in the foliage, I have to mix a kind of a thicker paint with almost no water, so that's um, you can see the brush strokes of those like shaded foliage.
I'm using a clean, damp brush to soften the edges between the foliage and the foreground grass. And also I'm using a clean damp brush to lift some color on the roof so that I can see a stronger contrast between light and the dark. I think the foreground grass needs more texture so I'm mixing the orange color with a little bit of alizarin crimson and an Indian yellow and add more brush um, brush strokes. So because the foreground gra grass is much um, is drier right now, so my brush strokes wouldn't spread out like previously. And also I'm using my nail to scrape off some color so that it has some like highlights. This is a way to add a texture. And you have to do it before it gets dry, when it's not very wet. Um, you kind of have to do it, experiment it to see when it is the right timing. I left the paper to dry. You can speed it up with hair dryer. And so now um, I am ready to paint the windmill. So first I'm uh, mixing a light grayish color with the three primary colors that I use. By adjusting the ratios of these three colors, you can get a reddish gray, a bluish gray, or a greenish uh, gray. So I am going to first paint the shape of the windmill with this light gray. And this um, grayish color is the lit part we can see on the windmill. And then I'm going to um, paint the shaded part with a much darker, much darker um, gray or black. Because the paper is dry now, um, it creates a hard edge between the windmill and the um, foliage. So I'm using a clean, damp brush to soften the edges. Now I'm mixing a dark gray by using the same colors, but just with less water. And I'm just adjusting the ratios of yellow, blue, and red to achieve the desired um, hue. Now I'm using this dark color to paint the shaded side of the windmill. If there are hard edges that you don't want, you can always use a clean damp brush to soften um, the edges. Now I'm moving on to the, the leaves of the windmill, just picking up some grayish color. And here um, I wanted to paint these loo leaves loosely, meaning I don't want very straight line and very um, 
like equal spaces between different uh, between the lines um, because I want to try to see how it will look like if I paint loosely. When I look at other artists' um, paintings, I'm always drawn to those who paint loosely. Um, I don't like architectural drawings where you know it's very precise and straight. Uh, they're very beautiful, but just not what I like. So here I'm practicing to achieve the effect that I like. And it might fail completely. It might it might not work. But you know you won't know until you try it. I think if we paint for, from life, um, it would be much easier to simplify and loosen up. But when we are working with a reference photo, it just there's this urge to follow the reference photo and then, then I just get worried. Oh, the lines are not straight. All this um, doesn't look like the photo. So I'm really trying to fight against this instinct um, when I'm working with a reference photo because I really want to loosen up. I just wanted to say that simplifying your painting is not simple at all. And in the process, you have to constantly make executive decisions and there might be self-doubt voices coming up. Oh shoot, what am I doing? Did I make a mistake? Did I ruin the painting? Did I mess up? But we have to just do it and then see how it turns out and then learn from our mistakes. So I'm actually thinking about naming my videos um, Messing up in studio with Maya instead of easy watercolor with Maya. Um, I think the paint watercolor is easy and not easy. And I don't want to present myself as if, you know, watercolor is so easy and I have already figured everything out. Um, I want to share this painting process with you and so that we can together practice and improve. Um, now the painting is almost finished, but I want to add some details to the foreground. So I'm, because the paper is dry, so I sprayed some water, um, onto the paper and I pick up some Indian yellow. And I am going to splash it onto the foreground. And then I'm going to add a little bit of lizard crimson and splash it onto the paper again. Um, there's some got onto the distant field and the lower sky, so I'm just using a paper to wipe it off. Now I'm picking up some orange color and just kind of finalizing the details in the foreground. Um, it is a little bit dangerous now because since the painting is really done, but then you can never tell when it's done. You can always keep adding details, you know, adjusting things, but you know, it has to end at some point. So at this stage, we really need to fight the urge to overwork. This is the final painting. Hope you like my video. Please click like and subscribe. See you next time.